Hi, this is DJ80 here, and today I'm going to do a review uh, of some new speakers which I've just got. And they are the Turbo Sound Inspire uh, IP1000 speakers, and I have a pair of them. Right, they've just been delivered today, so here they are all boxed up. Um, one thing I will say straight off the bat is uh, the base speakers or the boxes are bigger and heavier than I was expecting, um, but a lot of that might be packaging. Um, I read some reviews that you could carry uh, one set around um, under one arm, um, but those boxes were quite heavy as it goes. But um, I'll take them all apart and we'll see what's inside the box. Now, just a quick note they do come well packaged. Um, this is a box that was within a box, and on top of that, as you can see, um, they're nicely packed as well. So, well, here's what we get in the box. So we get our base bin, and we get our satellite speaker, and you get manual, and a three pin plug. So uh, this unit here was opened by the shop, and uh, I'm not going to mention the uh, shop name because the service wasn't very good at all, so I don't want to give them a plug. <laughs> but talking of plugs, uh, they sent in their box um, this two pin plug with an adapter and um, they'd uh, I already know that they opened the box they, they told me that they'd opened it and tried it but they've obviously put the wrong or they haven't added the proper plug to it but that's fine so the um, manual says that these are net weight of 25 kilos and I was quite surprised actually uh, from the reviews and that that I'd seen um, I, I read one review that said that you could carry it all in one hand and your guitar in the other um, but I think you'd struggle with that a little bit but they're not unmanageable So I reckon you're probably looking at about 16 kilos for the base so what I'm going to do now is uh, put it together and we'll give it a trial Okay, so after a little bit of faffing, um, I managed to get the uh, Bluetooth working. Um, I had trouble um, getting the process to follow from master to slave. And um, I tried on my phone, which is a cheap Qbot Android phone, and it wouldn't work. Um, and um, eventually I went to my iPad, and um, I've got it working from my iPad. So I've got the left-hand speaker on master, the right-hand speaker on slave and uh, it's on its lowest volume setting at the moment on the iPad okay so I'm going to uh, turn up the volume now okay I'm on half volume Hi, uh, this is DJ80 here. Uh, I'm at my venue and now uh, we're going to do uh, a review, a live sound test of the speakers at a venue. Okay, so this is how I've got them set up. Um, originally I was going to use Bluetooth and um, I tried it once at home and it was fine and then when I tried it the second time um, I got hissing through one of the speakers. So um, I had to uh, rush around today and find some adapters so what I've got is um, a three and a half mil coming out of my PC 
and um, I'm using VDGA with touchscreen and I've got some phono adapters here which are going in so my red and white's going in and then I've got two XLR leads coming out so uh, these inputs here uh, are multi inputs so you can use XLR uh, or you can use the phono leads like I have so I've got link A and link B coming out and then in my second speaker I've got the XLR going in input A and input B and that's what they look like set up so I'll put some music on um, and I'll put them on low first and then I'll put them on high volume so I've got an on ambient volume at the moment Um, the venue is uh, 120 capacity, so I'll quickly show you. So we have a downstairs and there's also an upstairs as well, of 120 people. The volume's nice and clear, bass is nice and steady as well. So, um, unfortunately, the speakers don't come uh, with a distortion light, so if you're over pushing them, um, you won't know. Uh, you have to do it by ear. Uh, so, that's something that they could do with just a, an LED or something that just tells you when they're being clipped. But we'll put the volume up now and we'll have a listen. So I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm right at the back of the upper level of the venue. going to try and do is uh, later on this evening when we have uh, hopefully a full dance floor um, and we've got people in front of them um, and downstairs I'll try and get another clip then as well. They're on uh, about a third volume. Okay, so um, I've uh, given you the live show in that. So now it's just time for me to give you my conclusion. And uh, I've written them down. So um, I'm going to quickly turn the camera around uh, so it's facing the other way on the phone. And I'll read out the conclusions that I've got. Here's my conclusions then for the Turbo Sound IP1000. I'll start with the negatives first. Alright, so I think the biggest uh, negative with this speaker at the moment um, is its Bluetooth functionality. Okay, so there have been reported issues of hissing, um, and I've experienced this myself with this unit. Um, I've done some research, and um, I, I, I have a 
lot of reports back that um, you can remove the hissing. Uh, there's an option on the control panel to do uh, factory reset and apparently sometimes that removes it. Um, I got these speakers on Friday, um, I gigged them on Saturday and I'm doing the rest of this review that you're hearing now on the Sunday. So I haven't had a chance to try and um, have a play with them and sort out the Bluetooth issues. Uh, but I do think um, part of the Bluetooth issue is a lot of devices now um, use Bluetooth 4.1 which is uh, multi-point. So it will send the Bluetooth signal uh, to more than one device and uh, this has only been around for I don't know a couple of years um, my Bluetooth sender um, I bought uh, specifically to send to more than one device and um, how Bluetooth works on this speaker is you send out a Bluetooth signal and speaker one picks up the signal and then you link speaker one to speaker two but um, speaker one sends the signal to speaker two by Bluetooth and I think we're getting the hissing because speaker two which would be here is receiving the signal from speaker one via Bluetooth but your Bluetooth sender um, like your phone for instance could be sending out a signal to speaker two as well so effectively speaker two is receiving a Bluetooth signal from speaker one and from your phone um, and I think that might be causing the hissing but um, I'm not an expert on that technology so don't take my word for it but um, in my head that kind of makes sense and would perhaps explain why um, you have some hissing. Um, if you've got an old phone um, that can only send out to, uh, to one speaker at a time um, that might not happen. Uh, so as I mentioned uh, the remedy does seem to be a factory reset which is an option on the control panel um, and the control panel uh, is quite easy to use. So another negative that I've got for this speaker is the connections at the back. So as you can see we're pretty um, scarce. Uh, we have these multi-point connections here and they are either XLR or phono leads. Um, so for some of you who don't use um, that type of cable you're almost certainly going to need to buy um, converters or um, uh, use a different playout system mixer for instance um, and just two other things that are negative really the first one is the instruction manual is um, it's quite light I think there's only sort of four pages of English um, which is useful information um, and, and it um, could perhaps be worded a bit better it's a minor point I, I got through it um, but it did take a few few tries of going back and sussing it out. Um, I think uh, the biggest issue I had was when trying to pair them, uh, one speaker up to speaker two and it was um, going back and forth to the speakers to try and get them to talk to each other. And then the last negative issue is um, the carry bay, uh, carry bay cases um, for these speakers is expensive. Um, I think, uh, off the top of my head, I think the the case for the bottom was about uh, forty pound, and the long case for the top for the column is about fifty pound, um, and that's just for one of each. So you could be looking at close to two hundred pound just for cases for a pair of these. So those are my negative points, um, and then obviously positives. Okay, so the first positive I've got is this control panel here. It's dead easy to use. Um, it's, it's so easy to navigate through. Um, it's sort of process set up, enter and exit, and, and that's it. It's like back and forth. Um, they're sturdy. Um, they're quite weighted here. And this, because this column has four metal pins going into the bottom, it just adds to that stability a bit. And I can tell you on the clip that you saw, um, at my gig, um, also at that gig that night, um, I had a drunk girl falling to the base of my speaker here and it wobbled, I saw her, I, I was keeping my eye on her because she was falling all over the place um, and uh, it did wobble but it didn't fall down so as you can see that does move a little bit but because of the pins in the bottom because they go quite, quite right down um, it just adds to that stability so for me that's uh, a positive. Uh, turbo sound obviously 
has a good pedigree uh, in speaker manufacturing, manufacturing so uh, you, you're not dealing with something new um, and untried and untested. Um, they can be linked, which is another positive. So um, each speaker has his connection, so these were my connections out. Um, and in the instruction manual, um, it does say you can link up to four speakers. Um, and they sound amazing. Uh, you, everything on this YouTube clip has been recorded by my phone. So obviously it's hard to hear the clarity um, and hear it in great detail. Um, but hopefully it would have given you some idea. I was just totally blown away um, when I did my gig last night with these. Um, I didn't even have them up to half volume uh, at the peak point during the night. Uh, there wasn't much dance floor space that I had at that venue. Um, but I did at one stage have, you know, all the areas that wasn't covered by table and seats. I had people up dancing and I didn't need to push these speakers more than halfway. Um, so I know that they're going to be good for much bigger venues, certainly for the sizes that I deal with. Um, and the sound quality was just mind-blowingly good. Um, so uh, that, that's 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 my conclusion of these speakers. Obviously, I recommend, as always, to do a little bit of your own research. Obviously, watching this video is your first step. Um, perhaps if you can, going to have a listen of them. But they don't seem to be in stock in many places. Um, a lot of um, the shops that I rang and spoke to before I ordered these uh, said to me they didn't have them on stock. Um, they um, order them when they get orders through. So you might struggle to find somewhere to go and listen to, but make some phone calls. And um, yeah, I think that's it. All I will say now is if, um, if you liked and you've appreciated my YouTube video, uh, whether it's made you want to go out and buy a pair or whether it's made you decide not to buy a pair, um, you can always say thank you by just uh, clicking on one of my tracks and um, having a listen or having it playing in the background whilst you're continuing your research uh, because every little click helps me. So um, I've been DJ80 and uh, thanks for watching.